What's up guys, my name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a super simple video for you that's going to be incredibly useful if you do any kind of freelance web developing or program developing, app developing, etc, etc. So of course, if you're using GitHub already, then you know how useful it is to have its versioning features where you can go back into a project of yours, such as my account switcher over here, go into the history and see each change to each individual file over the ages and you can go back and pick out basically anything from the past go back to it, revert to whatever comment it is, and pull out the files that you need, then go back to your current version and continue editing. It's super useful to have, and it lets you have a versioned backup system that doesn't take up too much space. Of course, if you're using GitHub or something already for your project, it's more than likely okay to be out there for other people to see, and if someone gained access to your account through whatever means, then everything's good. Maybe you're not working on an open source project and instead you're working on a project that's only meant for your eyes and your eyes only or your eyes and whoever you're working with or selling it to's eyes. And of course, when you have that kind of need, you probably won't be using GitHub or anything else like that to sync your files to and have a nice version to history. If you're anything like me, then you probably have multiple copies of the same website or something similar just so that you have some sort of a backup through different stages or versions of your project and it can take up a ton of space very quickly. On screen, I have a screenshot of a project of mine that I was working on with a friend. The project had five versions, taking up almost a gig of space over 5,800 files, all the way from back in June 2019 to the current day, June 2020. And of course, because they're all different versions, my client may want to go back and work with previous versions or pull something out from the past, so keeping these backups is important though it can take up a ton of space, especially if I have it backed up somewhere. And if I had the control of using a GitHub repo or something similar, then that would be great, but I don't want to share it with anyone. So how exactly do you do this? Well, the simplest way of maintaining a Git repository for yourself is to simply just create one and maintain it locally. You don't have to send it off to the internet, even though that may be what you're used to if you're used to collaborating or simply using open source projects on GitHub or something similar. So how exactly do we do it? Well, of course you can do it with the Git command line, but that's a bit confusing to get started with and I much prefer the visual layout of GitHub desktop. So how exactly do we get the GitHub desktop feel without actually having to use GitHub and maintaining our repos locally? Well, it's actually pretty simple and the program that I'll be using is called SourceTree, which will be linked down in the description below. SourceTree is very similar to GitHub desktop. It has a similar look and feel and works pretty much the same. And of course, you'll get this from basically any Git client for Windows, Mac, Linux, etc, etc. This one is only available for Windows and Mac, though if you're watching this video, you're probably using Windows. So I'll go ahead and click download for Windows. I agree and download. Then we'll get the installer, simply click on it to open it up, run when prompted. We'll get a little black command prompt window and the installer will start up. Then we should get to this installer screen over here. When you see this, you'll be asked to link a GitHub, GitLab, Visual Studio team, etc. service, which I'm not actually going to do because I'm purely going to be maintaining these offline. So I'll simply click skip. Then we'll get to pick install tools. I'll leave everything as is. And we have advanced options down here where it says configure automatic line ending handling by default. I have this checked as it's recommended. Then I'll click next and we'll see some info about our account that we'll be using offline. Of course, whatever the author name is and the email over here is basically pointless. You can keep it to whatever you want, but this is what I'll have it set up as. Then I'll click next and we'll get through to this here. Load SSH key. Do you have an SSH key that you'd like to load now? If not, you can click no and create one later. Of course, I don't have an SSH key, so I'll simply click no. Then we'll get to this page over here. Of course, you won't have any local repositories, though this is what I have currently. You'll have a local and then remote. Remote is for stuff like GitHub, GitLab, etc. And local is what we'll be mainly using over here. Of course, it's got a nice tabbed system so you can open your different projects in different tabs pretty easily. So from here, what I'm going to do is click create and we'll get this pop up over here. I'll simply browse to a folder that I'd like to create this project. For me, I've got this test file on my desktop, which is all of these files over here. As you can see, I already have a repository over here. So hypothetically, you already have a repository that you'd like to load locally. Simply click the add button over here, click browse, browse to the folder, select folder and hit add. Then once we've done that, we'll see all of these over here, which is very similar to the GitHub desktop layout. 
This is of course the history tab, you may be landing up on the file status or search tab instead. But under history, if we keep the folder open on the left, we can simply double click on a previous version, OK, and all of the files will change to this previous version no matter what we choose over here. Sometimes you may see this over here saying warning commits may be lost, you're about to leave a detached head and your current commit isn't reachable by other branches which means that they will not appear in the log after this action. Are you sure you want to continue? If in doubt, click no and create a branch where you are instead. So I'll click yes, OK, and we'll switch to this different version. And of course, this is probably the easiest way to maintain files. You can just click on a version, look through these over here, and see what you have on the right hand side, edit them as necessary. But really, I'll just be changing between these versions, and I'll probably leave it on the latest version most of the time, because that's mainly what I'll be working with. If I need something from the past, I can either grab it from here, or I can simply revert back to it, copy the file that I need, and come back to the latest version. So of course, if you're used to GitHub already, or anything else like that, then you probably know all of these buttons up here. All that you'll really be using is the commit button and this history tab over here if you'd purely like to maintain previous versions of your project just in case you need to go back and pull files out of them. So if I were to add a file to this folder over here as such, then I'll head across to the file status page and after a couple of seconds we'll get unstaged files down here. I'll simply click stage all, drag and drop them across or right click them and click add. Then after we've got all the files that we'd like to save into this commit in these staged files, I can simply enter a description for it down here. I'll simply enter one, two, three, four, click commit, and boom, all of our files have been saved into this invisible Git folder over here. Then we can have a look at the history tab and we can see all of the different versions over here as we expected. Great. And of course, if you'd like to back up this GitHub folder over here, simply back up this invisible .git folder. How exactly do you see it? Well, simply head across to view and make sure hidden items is checked. Usually you'd have this off just so that if you select all of the files and delete them by accident, you don't accidentally delete this actual Git folder because if you delete this, then you've lost all of the previous versions of your project. That's why it's kept as invisible. Then of course, if you'd like to back up this project, simply make sure that this .git file is backed up. So you can either add it to a zip or simply copy and paste it across to a different drive or even use a cloud backup service to keep this folder over here safe. That means that if you lose absolutely everything and you still have access to this .git folder, you can still have access to all the previous versions of your site or whatever you're working on and get back to them as necessary. So of course, that's very simple to use and that's basically all I'll be using it for. But of course, if you don't have an existing Git project already, you'll need to create one. So I'll hit the plus up here and I'll close out of my previous tab. Then I'll hit the create button and I'll pick a destination path. So for this, I'll head across to my desktop and make a test to folder. Select folder and there we go, I'll click create. I'll get a pop-up asking if I'd like to replace this existing folder, yes. And opening it up, you can see there's now the invisible .git folder. So of course I can add files to this and commit as expected. I'll just add the shortcut into the folder, add it as a commit, give it a description, commit, and now it's in the version history. I can swap to it and do basically anything else you can do with any other Git manager. And of course, because it's a Git, you can use it between multiple clients. It doesn't have to be source stream. You can share it with other people. And as long as they know what's happening with the Git, they'll probably be able to access previous versions of your project very easily. Super useful. Mainly, I'll be using it for my website over here. I've got a ton of different files in it and a ton of different versions from all the way back in 2016. Say I'd like to go back and see what the website looked like back then. I can simply just double click on it here and all of my files in that folder are then replaced with the previous version and I can swap back and forth between it. I'll go ahead and open up the folder where this is in now, simply by clicking the Explorer button up in the top right. As you can see, these are all of the files that are currently on my website. If I push it across to the side and pick a previous version like 2016.05, double click on it and click OK, we'll swap back to it and all of these files will be swapped out with the previous version. If I open up my index page or whatever, you can see that it's going back to the very first website that I had that I created back in 2016 with a nice little animation and a terrible menu. But with that aside, I can simply grab what I need, switch back to the latest version, and after a couple of seconds, all of my files are here as expected. And of course, if I have a look at this entire folder, you can see it takes up about 218 megs. These top ones over here since 2018 each take up about 200 megs each. 
And previously, I had all of these backed up as individual zip files, so of course the file size wasn't as big as you'd expect, but it was still a ton of space. If we have a look at this invisible.git folder properties, you can see that it takes up about 300 megs, which is better than 200, 200, 200, 200, 100, 100, 100, etc, etc. It's very useful to have and very useful for versioning, especially if you have a project that you'd like to put up on a GitHub similar site, but you don't want to share the files with other people. This source tree program is going to be incredibly useful for me, and I'm sure that if you found this video and you didn't know you were looking for this, it's going to be incredibly useful for you as well, because I really like the versioning features that come with GitHub and other sites, but I don't necessarily want to share all of my files with other websites. Anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.